For the distributors, Roadshow Australia, cruising was adding up to be a good thing at the box office. Not only was there sex, but homosexual sex, and violence, a veritable orgy of it. And added to that, what better than a controversy? Protests by homosexual groups over the film in America were already beginning to bubble here. Every homosexual group imaginable had been contacted and showered with free tickets for last night's preview. So it's no wonder that they arrived in their droves, gays and straights alike, prepared to be exposed to whatever Hollywood was offering on the subject. Cheap exploitation? Certainly not, said Roadshow. There was much more meaning to it all than that. What the film does for me, and I can only speak personally in this regard, is certainly uh, make me question uh, some of the stereotypes of, of the masculine sexual role. I think this is why I, like most of the men who see cruising, do feel confronted, do feel that perhaps our stereotyped and quite firmly entrenched attitudes to our own uh, persona as males in a, in, a, in a predominantly male society, in a society that encourages men to be strong and dominant and very intolerant of things like sensitivity and perceptions. I think the film forces those sort of that, that self-questioning because it, it mixes and blends and confuses the, the stereotypes. And I think that's, that's why I see the film as a value. When William Friedkin, the director, described it as a modern horror movie, I think he meant it's a modern horror movie for men because I think a lot of men are unwilling to accept the implications of the movie. Women, a lot more so. Despite the anger in America, some homosexuals here were reluctant to say too much about the film before seeing it. Until we've seen it, of course, we don't know how we feel about it. All the news from America and England is that it's a very unpleasant, um, fairly silly film, uh, an untrue representation of most of gay life, and one whose general intention seems to be to provoke violence against gays. And there's too much of that already. Apparently the film is portraying homosexuals having sex in a public bar, which really doesn't happen anywhere, as far as we know. Uh, there are bars in America, a friend of mine has seen them, where they do have places set up for them behind the uh, scenes, say down in the cellar, or uh, completely away, and they're usually dark in places. Does that sort of thing happen in Australia? That doesn't happen in, the clubs in Australia. Here? No, it doesn't matter. Would you not agree, though, that the homosexuals it depicts just aren't like that generally? that most homosexuals are very different than that? Well, it's certainly true to say that most homosexuals as presented in the mass media aren't like that. Um, it is not about um, limp-wristed mincing homosexuals as usually characterised on television or in other movies. I find that uh, refreshing in the sense, and this is what this review from the San Francisco magazine went on to say, that it's nice to see homosexuals being strong, being masculine, being aggressive, loving each other in a, in a, in a real way. It relates homosexuality with violence, doesn't it? Do you object to that yeah, as such? I do, yes, because all sex should, uh, is uh, being sort of, uh, sort of downgraded. By, by the use or the showing of sex in, with violence because, you know, about a large percentage of people don't associate violence with sexual activity. Undoubtedly, it promotes, an ins uh, from what I've read, it promotes and incites hatred and anti-gay attitudes. And um, this is moving in the opposite direction from uh, the direction which society has been moving. What you're saying, of course, is it's giving an unrealistic, uh, inaccurate um, description or portrait of homosexuals. Don't you think it is? Well, it's not characterising all homosexuals. The film does not, uh, it is, is not posited on that, uh, on that position. It does not claim to do that in the same way that Are You Being Served, I'm sure, does not claim through, its, through the character that John Inman uh, portrays, again, to, to, to be truly representative of all homosexuals. I thought it was awful. I'm glad I wasn't paying for it. Um, it was a bad thriller. I mean, I uh, just, you know, I feel... It's a terrible film, um, and sickening, uh, but uninteresting, it just doesn't work. But are homosexuals work. likely to be affected because of its screening, do you think? Well, I think it's such a lousy film that it won't have much effect at all, because no one will want to see it. I didn't like it. 
Do you think it gave you any insight at all into the world of homosexuality? Yes. But I, I'm glad I'm nearly normal myself. <laughs> Very frightening. Why frightening? Uh, the violence and uh, just a totally different scene to what's happening here, you know, what's happening in the States compared to Australia. Something I've never seen before. As a female, I found it very attractive. I really did. And the women I was sitting with agreed with me. They thought it was wonderful. What do you mean by very attractive? Attractive. I found the men attractive. I think, uh, I hate the word gay. I think it's vile. I think it's time we stopped sending up the idea of what homosexuality is about. Those men in the scenes, in the bar scenes, were totally upfront about what they were doing. They went in. Um, they were looking for a pickup. I mean, it's the same sort of with singles bars. Exactly the same things happen. The subliminal message, the message of that film, is that gays are sick, which is of course nonsense. I think it's the American attitude to violence that's sick, and I think it's probably that director that's sick. Well, I think it'd be a great film to use for aversion therapy. I mean, <laughs> anyone's got a problem, show them that, and they won't have the problem after. Oh, I feel like if you really want to wallow in a sewer, you'll come and see cruising. <laughs>